What's up, gang? I realized um, I wanted to play uh, Shaggy, but now I want to play Freddy. I wanted to play Shaggy in CBD, but now I think I'd make it play Freddy. What's up, gang? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna solve these problems. We're gonna figure out. We're gonna we're gonna figure out who the killer is. We're gonna, we're gonna you know, for niggas that be for niggas that be trying to tell me that I'm too old, <laughs> nigga, they're too old to be fucking. First off, the niggas just be dressing up. Man, fuck you. What the fuck is going on right now? Like. Niggas is about to start a war just because they want they want fucking people in their twenties to have something to do. Like what the fuck, the fuck, bro? Like what the fuck, man? Like this shit is so stupid. Hold on. Yeah, but it's like, what am I, it's like, it's like, what, what am I supposed to be right now? What am I supposed to be? College? You wouldn't let me go to college, I'm too smart. Um, yeah, all right, college would be ending now, I'd be out of college, what would I be doing right now? I'd be an intern somewhere. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would, I'd be an intern somewhere. But y'all wouldn't let me go to college. I'd be making I'd be making movies right now. I'd be making movies. I'm pissed. I'll find a way. I always find a way, especially with this new mask shit. Something something I noticed. They want water. Fuck dude. Oh, that was oh Um, but yeah, <sighs> who knows how life happens, so who knows how what I want's gonna happen, who fucking cares, uh, I'm gonna get it, I always get what I want, especially when I know I can, it's when I don't know that I can, that I, I struggle to get it, but when I know I can get it, that's when I get it, so, yeah, cool life, um, anyway, yeah, what is the 20 year old supposed to be doing right now? I mean, what does a 20 year old do when they get off of work, right? Still playing video games. If they have friends going out and doing stuff for friends, maybe traveling the world, but they still gotta have a job so they can't travel all the time. Maybe they can drive three hours away every couple of weekends. What is a 20 year old, what is a 20 something old supposed to be doing right now? It's like, it's like, it's like getting too old to be doing what? What are we getting too old to be doing? I mean, what are you too old to do at this point? 20 year olds could fucking dress up for Halloween and somehow that feels acceptable. Like somehow that seems like something a couple of fucking 20 something year olds would do. They would dress up for Halloween. Maybe go to a party. I don't fuck around. I might, I might actually go trick or treating. Like, I don't see a reason not to. So I just don't give what 20 something year olds are too old to be doing. Maybe too old to be jealous, too old to be plotting on each other. It makes sense when you're a kid and you don't know much about life and you're afraid that you're gonna lose everything you have. No, it doesn't make sense. That, that does make sense when you're 20. Fuck, that does make sense. Fuck, dude. Uh. I'm saying. You're supposed to, at 20, you're supposed to have a, uh, 
a fucking Fortune 5K job, okay? You're supposed to be, um, you're supposed to be fucking solving those problems and all that stuff, right? And it's like, so at 20, you're supposed to give up on all your hobbies. You're supposed to have a suit and tie every day. You're supposed to be worried about making more money all the time. You're supposed to be plotting. You're supposed to be getting smarter. You're supposed to be learning the tricks, right? And then at 30, right, what are you supposed to be doing at 30? The same fucking thing. And if you haven't become a fucking CEO by 30, that's what you're trying to do when you're fucking 30-something, right? And if you haven't become a CEO by 40, what the fuck are you doing? Like, the fuck is the point in all this? And, like, I don't get who who has the standard that they're looking down on everybody else with. Like, like when I watch a video of, like, some YouTubers fucking streaming and they're having a good time in their home and they're just fucking around. And I get this weird feeling that, um, that there's, like, somebody in the audience. There's somebody watching me watch them saying, Ugh, those guys are too old, they're not doing anything. And it's like, what the fuck is there? What the fuck is there to do? What the fuck are we supposed to be doing? Like, look, try to solve homelessness, right? Who do we have to argue with? We gotta argue with the fucking the fucking people in council, right? Boom. What the fuck can we do about that? And go go. We we'll fucking get picket signs. Go protest. What the fuck are we supposed to do? We do it. Hey, change this. Shut the fuck up. You're still young. You don't get it. Oh, all right, fuck it then. You know what the fuck are we supposed to do? And then, and then you got, and then it's like we can try, try and fix like what the fuck are we supposed to do? fix your fucking drug addictions. You think people our age are listening to us? Unless you can fucking, bro, uh, people our age, unless you can control them, unless you have something that they want and can police upon them, you have leverage. You have something that they can't stop you from having over them. They're not going to listen to a damn thing you have to say. You're their parents. Anytime you tell them, hey, don't do this with your life. You're their fucking mom and you're their dad now. They're arguing with you like they're teenagers. Some fucking point in that. So what the fuck were you supposed to do? You were supposed to sign up for the army and go kill the foreigners who don't agree with our policies. The fuck? What am I, what am I supposed to do, bro? Like, this shit is so stupid, bro. I don't give a fuck what I'm supposed to do. like cool adults i'm watching i'm watching the pot i'm gonna make some noodles so you got those cool adults that are always like man you don't need to have your life figured out by 20 you need to have it figured out by 30 that's you got those adults right but then you got these other adults that are like oh my gosh you're you're 25 and you haven't fucking um you haven't fucking become a, a fucking i can't even think see every time i want to call it out it's harder to do see i don't get this shit i don't get this shit i'm not 25 yet though I don't get this shit, man. It's like this weird pressure to be somebody by now, but also you got nobody to be. The fuck? Like, what are you supposed to do? Other than other than my dreams, what am I supposed to be chasing? The fuck? I was 18 six years ago, right? I was 18 six years ago, damn. I was 18 six years ago. That means that I've only had six years to be an adult that can do things whether somebody likes it or not. I've only had six, six years to actually navigate this on my own. I had a really good chance at blowing up, but everybody around me did like a fucking physical thing. They got into like a physical position because none of them wanted to accept that. And you can say, hey, stop blaming it on others. I'm sick of you saying it's everyone else's fault. It really fucking was though. It really was. Everyone got jealous. Everybody wanted to see it not happen. They were acting on what they wanted. Physical, they physically lined up on me. Got confusing. Nobody wanted me to be a good person anymore. Nobody wanted me to deserve it. And that's what happened. 
that's what happens. So fuck you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you if you if you achieve success too early, everyone your age fucking hates you unless you can give them money. So. And not to mention the people older than you. They they want you to fucking die. Like the the kids your age, they hate you, right? They they might want you to become a creep. They might want you to lose your reputation. But the adults, they want you to get shot. The the fucking the older people, they want you to fucking die. Like that's what they want, bro. It's so fucked up. Dude. Success is such a weird thing. You're judged for not having it. You're killed if you do. That shit is insane, dude. It's so annoying. And so it's like... Somebody would look at me right now and not want to hear the whole story of how I got here, even though you all fucking know. And they would be like, well, you just haven't done anything good with your life. You know what I mean? It's like, none of what I'm dealing with are my consequences anymore. None of this is my consequences anymore. All of this is people reacting to the idea of me being successful like two years ago, uh, five years ago, six years ago. All of this is people not wanting to accept it and saying that I don't really want it if I'm not willing to fucking kill them as they stop me from being successful, as they just go, hmm, I don't care. No, don't help me. Mm. There's fucking guys, these guys that think that it's their job when they're jealous to make what I'm doing harder so that it's fair for them. So they, it's their job to, if I figure, if I become organized, if I start organizing, if I, I schedule shoots, I got people participating, they're like, mm, he's doing it too easy. Mm. Like it's like like I've got to I've got to compensate for their anger, for their frustration. And if not, then it's not fair, and I don't deserve it, and I don't want to work for it. I don't want to do the work when the work is just compensation for how they feel. It's fucking insane. Now you can't just know the math. Now you've got to fucking deal with them tearing up your fucking papers so that they can say so that you can do enough work to make them happy with you knowing all the math. That's what it is now. And then you got, and here's the fucking part that like, really gets me. This is the part that pisses me off. You got all these people, right, that like, I'm doing really good. I'm like, I'm, I'm on a path. That's the only logical occurrence unless I do something wrong. And obviously everyone's like, all right, fuck it. I'd rather do something wrong, right? Got all these people, right? And it's specifically this one chick, right? And it's like these people that are like, he was working so hard. Oh my gosh, it was so logical. Oh my gosh, he had it, but it just fell out of his hands. And now his life's ruined forever. You got all these people that are like, <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. Now your life's ruined. Now you're never, now you're never gonna be successful. How are you gonna explain it now? And it's like, bitch, that's fucking murder. That's fucking, what is that? That's murder. You ruined my life because you were jealous that you fucking murdered me. I'm just still alive. You fucking murdered me and I'm still alive. That It's crazy that you think that you deserve what you want over me. That's fucking insane to me, dude. That shit is insane. And it's always the same thing. People that can't make sense of them being successful because they can't get past a couple of arguments that are all like, well, how come this guy doesn't get to be successful? Uh, hmm, fuck, it's not fucking fair. I don't fucking know. And it's like, uh, that guy doesn't get to be successful because every time someone else is successful, he starts questioning their success until they don't have it anymore. Easy answer, right? But then they turn into that guy. They turn into that guy that questions everyone else's success. Mm, that doesn't make sense. How are you making money off of this? Ain't you a little too old? Like, don't you need to be doing something? What about doctors? You shouldn't be making, like, the, it, it's so stupid, bro. It's so stupid. And it's like, it's like everybody's trying to be rich as fuck. But when someone else is rich as fuck, everyone's trying to say that it doesn't make sense. This is a, this is a dumb fucking, this is, this life is literally fucking stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm above this fucking life. I, this life is so fucking retarded, bro. There are 
people who are trying to become impossibly rich right now who have the best arguments for why no one can be rich. There are people who are still trying to become rich as we speak who have the best ethical arguments against being rich so that they can stop everyone else from being rich before them. And these same people, whenever they fucking strike gold, they're going to be all like, so a nigga, that's life. That's how it is. Y'all need to work harder. What the fuck? That's not my fault. Those same fucking guys that are sitting there saying, that's not fair though. Everyone else works just as hard as you. Those same guys will be like, so what, nigga? I fucking worked. That's what I did. I fucking earned it. What the fuck? Those like, same fucking people, bro. And then all these people are like happy on the, how is he going to do it from here? How is he going to do it from here? He can't. And it's like, well, first off, I'm going to have to kill you this time because if I do it from here, you're going to throw so big of a fucking fit that I won't be able to survive regular fucking conditions. So obviously the only way I can become successful is if I get rid of you. Because every time I get close, you get fucking petty and annoying and fucking you pretty much just push me down and say, oh, you need to work harder. You need to work so hard. You need to work hard enough that, that uh, you weren't vulnerable to basic shit anymore. And it's like, it's like, you're going to blame me because you threw a temper tantrum at the idea of me being successful. You're going to say that that's my fault, that I was supposed to work harder because you fucking got, you threw a fit. Fuck that, dude. You need to go. You're too fucking, you're too fucking old. That's what that is. You're too fucking old. And these fucking same guys that are all like, these, these kids aren't even working for it anymore. Those same guys, they, I guarantee you, they are always trying to figure out how to get something for free. These same fucking guys that claim that they work harder than everyone else are always trying to figure out how to get something for free. They're not just out there fucking, uh, fucking towel wrapped around the head, pickaxe in hand. This is the life. I, this is what we're supposed to do as men. Think, think. I'm proud of myself. Think. I love doing this. It's I earn, I'm earning what I have. They're not doing that. They're like, oh fuck, man. Hey, we're friends, right? Can I have some money? <laughs> That's what the fuck they're doing out there, bro. They're they're fucking they're 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 over there. They're just fucking criticizing everyone who fucking accomplishes it. And here's the thing: what's the point of education if not to help you know more so that you don't have to do as much to get what you want? I'm a fucking genius. And y'all are still trying to say that it doesn't make sense for me to be successful at my level of intelligence. And then you and then you add, that's not fair. It's not fair that he gets to be successful just because he's intelligent. It's not fucking fair that I got to be fucking struggling just because you don't think it's fucking fair. Like, that shit doesn't make sense. You, if you, if you were born rich, nigga, you would not care. If you were born rich, you would not be saying, uh, that's not, that's not, you're right, it's not fair, I need to give my money up. No, you would be like, yeah, but that's what we, that's what parents work for. That's what everyone's working for, so that their kids can have money. That's what you would do. So what the fuck do you mean it's not fair that I get to be successful? What the fuck? I, not only, not only am I intelligent, I do the fucking work. I figure shit out. I put my effort into it. I do everything. Just because some fucking guy doesn't want to hire me over his religious beliefs, that has nothing to do with me. That's his fucking problem. I don't fucking care. I do my part, nigga. I, I do everything. Literally everything. She's just stupid now. She's just dumb. And there's always somebody that's like, Yeah, but when we went to college and you didn't, it's not fucking fair. And it's like, well, yeah, you also fucking kept people from going to college. Like, you and I both know for a fact you accepted the existence in which some people just weren't going to ever be successful and some people were and you accepted those conditions under the prerogative that you were going to be one of the people that were just going to be successful and now that you're getting closer to realizing that you might not be one of those people you think it's unfair now you think it's unfair but you were participating you were continuing this struggle of success for everyone because you thought that you were going to be at the top. But now that you're not. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, the democracy's unfair. Um, uh, capitalism is wrong. It's, it's fucking stupid, bro. It's serious. But then the niggas that are like, hey, we can all be successful. We can all have fun. You're fucking stupid. 
You're fucking, you think everyone can be, you're fucking retarded. Like, how the fuck, can I, how the fuck, what, how, how would anyone be rich if everyone had money? Bro, those fucking people right there, they piss me off, bro. Because it's like, it's like, first, it's some basic ass shit that you don't understand. Basic ass shit, when I try to tell you, you call me dumb. And then when it works out, you call life unfair. And I was nice. I was a very nice person. I was always trying to take on your condition of thinking and figure out how to get you to understand. But y'all niggas aren't thinking anymore. Y'all aren't thinking. Y'all are just fucking fighting. Y'all are just like, no, I don't want it. I don't care. Oh, I don't care. It's no fucking point in trying to understand what you think now. It's no fucking point. You're not thinking anymore. You're just scratching. You're just clawing. You're just fucking throwing fits. You're not trying to figure this out. There's no point in me giving up what I have to figure out why you don't have what you want. You don't fucking care to get what you want. You care to make sure that other people don't have what they want. You've given up on the idea that you can have what you want. You've given up on the idea of you being successful in the way that you actually enjoy. There's no point in helping you. That same life that you thought that you could win. That same life that you thought that... Uh, some people have to be poor so that being rich matters. Now you don't want that. Now you want life to be fair. Now you hate rich people. That's on you. You contributed to that style of thinking. You contributed to that mindset. That mindset, when everyone shares it, it becomes what life is. You contributed to it thinking that you were going to win. That's your fucking fault. When you were told that there was a different way for things to be, you ignored it. You killed it. It's the life you chose. It is fair. You can cry. You can keep talking. You can act like I'm wrong. But this is fair. You thought that if you worked harder than everyone else, that if you prevented everyone else from working, then you would have a right to success. But what you didn't realize is that there were other people that felt the same exact way with more resources than you. It's the game you chose to play. So I just watched the audition, uh, like a cult classic film uh, for, uh, from Japan, I think, I'm not sure. Um, and while, while learning the language, uh, I, was, I was sort of impressed by the ending, because there's a part in which it seems like reality is kind of mixing together. And so uh, if you haven't seen the film, I'm gonna spoil it here. Um, there's this guy. Uh, who's with this girl? He like he also wants to condition. Uh, post, uh, he also audition to find like a wife, right? And there's this girl. He's like, oh my gosh, whoa, what the heck, man? What is that? He's like in love with it, right? And 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 so the end of the film has him being tortured by her. And and we see like there's this there's this confusion about whether or not he's dreaming or not. And I really love this. This is really cool about reality. So I should say that his wife has died. At the beginning of the film, we see his wife die. And I think it's his only wife, his only love at that point. And then you see this character, this new female character, as he tries to move on and find a new wife, um, confusing, weird, unsettling. And then ends with him being tortured, right? And, and they have sex, and then she dis... Okay, first off, they have sex, right, for the first time, and then she disappears for a while. He goes looking for her can't find her, investigates her life, learns more about her. She was molested. Um, she, she, uh, she, I mean, that's the biggest revelation. She was molested and the guy that molested her like burned her or some shit, right? And that's like, okay, justifies her character a little bit, right? And so he, he looks for her, right? And then eventually he goes back home and he takes a sip of his whiskey because he's a sad, depressed man because his wife died and now his new wife is missing, right? Takes a sip, passes out, right? And we go through this whole dream sequence where he's like seeing her life. He's learning everything. He's seeing, she's got some guy tied up. She's got some guy tied up and, and he's, she's like barking apparently and feeding, it's weird. It's a disgusting film. But, so we see that after that whole dream sequence ends, and we're not sure if it's a dream, we're confused, that we're getting confused. She saws this fucking Lego. She comes back, she's like, you host these, you host auditions, call billions of women and then and then you tell them that they have a chance, and then the ones that you don't pick, you call them back later just to screw them. Something that this guy doesn't even do. He doesn't even do it. He's actually like in love with this girl throughout the entire movie. He's dedicated to her. He wants to understand her. He's he's not doing what she's accusing him of this entire time. So it's one of those things where her damage, her trauma, is is forcing her to see what she wants to kill in the people that she's attacking, regardless of who they are. 
a very real thing that I I, I think I can I can solve. Um, but so we see this gruesome scene. She he she takes his little wire right, wraps around his foot, wraps around his ankle. I mean, or like his legs. She saws his foot off. It's fucking disgusting. It's horrible. You put you you're put into the guy's shoes. You see from his point of view as she's like sticking these needles into you. And, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's horrible, right? And she tells you, you deserve it because all men are the same. You just fucking treat women like they're objects, all this shit, right? And, and, it's, and, and then it's revealed that she got molested, right? And then before that, you're not sure she got molested. You, you don't want to say that she got molested. Um, but then again, I was watching the movie without subtitles, so they might have said that. But anyway, um, so so after this, I, I, at the point that she was like fucking torturing this guy, right? I'm like, okay, so you got burned on the fucking inner thigh when you were a little girl. Okay, that doesn't justify this. And then right after that, like the movie's fucking responding to me, right? It shows the guy, it show, it pretty much shows that she, she was getting molested, right? It implies that she was getting molested. And I was like, okay, that does kind of change things because that, that will fuck up your psychology, right? And and so in the middle of this torture sequence, this guy, this guy's son is coming home and he's about to walk, he's walking on the dad. The dad's missing the foot now. And the lady, she's about to attack him, right? And then that scene earlier where they were having sex for the first time, he had asked him to marry her, right? He wakes up, and it was all a dream. He, he's, he's still in bed with her. They're still naked. He, look, he looks, he gets up, he's freaking out. He's confused. And then he fucking looks under the cover. He still has his foot. He's like, oh, my gosh. And then he's like, and then she's like, I accepted your proposal. I accept your proposal. I want to marry you. He's like, really? Holy shit. That's crazy. And then he's like laying down. And all of a sudden, it goes back to the same scene, right? We were like, we, I, and at that point, I was so relieved. I was like, oh, fuck. And what I thought happened is that the movie was responding to me in real time. And that because I figured out why it didn't make sense, I got the good ending. And the good ending was the one where it was all just a dream. And he was freaking out. And none of it was real, right? And I can explain why that makes sense after I finish this. Um, uh, so he goes back. He's still in the scene. He's still he's still tortured. He's still missing the foot. His son is still about to be attacked. And and at that point, I was like, oh fuck, no, no! I was so upset, bro. I was so mad. Um, but um, uh, so so this lady, she's like trying to spray his son. His son pushes her down the stairs. She breaks her neck, right? And this is where it gets fucking interesting. The son's calling the cops. That scene where we where I, we think it's all just a dream. He wakes up. He's still next to her, right? And they're still in bed. She's saying all this lovely stuff to him, right? The son pushes her, pushes her down the stairs in the reality where his foot is cut off. And, and her neck gets broken. She can't talk. She can hardly breathe, right? And we see that while he's like, while he's like fucking like dying, or like he's like fucking confused. He sees her body. She's down the stairs. Her neck's broken. Um, her body. Well, she, she starts saying the same stuff that she was saying to him. In that scene where we all hope that it's just a dream, where they're still in bed and she just accepted his proposal. She's saying the same exact thing. And at that point, we know it's impossible. And what that ending does is so fucking amazing because now we can't tell which one is real. Now we can't tell whether or not the fucking, the, the reality where it's all just a dream and he's laying in bed with her after they just had sex is the real reality because she's saying the same thing in that fucking, and, and we can't tell what this dream and this one where he got his fucking foot cut off is the real one. We can't tell which one is fucking real anymore. And I think that is so genius. And here's what I think is happening. I think that they're both equally real, but his concept doesn't know which one makes the most sense. He's in a state of superposition in which he doesn't know which one to accept. And here's what I think is happening. At the beginning of the film, we see his wife, his first love, his one wife, die. He has guilt over moving on from his wife. And I think that that guilt over moving on from his wife is what manifests this attack from this girl, uh, Asami, right? This girl, I think that Asami, he, cause he's like a he doesn't even see her what she looks like. The first time he sees her, the first time he's like, oh my gosh, he doesn't even see her fucking face. He has nothing to be impressed with, right? Doesn't even see her body really. She's sitting in a chair. And so what I think is that his guilt over his dead wife, over moving on from his wife, is manifesting Asami, the experience of Asami, because he feels that he needs to be punished. His shame, his guilt is manifesting as a woman who specifically says, while she's torturing him, all men are the same. You you just treat women like they don't matter. So you're, in other words, you're just moving on like it doesn't fucking matter, right? And so what I think is going on is that in that scene, 
where they just had sex, where where she she's accepting his proposal, parallel to the scene where she's fucking sawing him in half. This is the fucking this is like his 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 split of reality between the confusion of whether he should have shame over moving on from his wife or whether it's an okay thing to do. In the reality where he has shame, he's being tortured by Sami. In reality where it's an okay thing to do, things are fucking beautiful. So so it's like this it's so what I think is happening is that his being is literally split between two logical occurrences to him and he doesn't know which one to accept. But here's the thing, there's that law. When in between two realities, two equally probable realities, the one that is more traumatic is easier to occur because it has more to react to. So, what I think is happening is that this whole film is just a manifestation of his guilt over moving on after his wife dies. And Asami is not real, when she is real, but Asami is only real to him within his experience because it's the only way for him to address the guilt that he feels over his wife. That's what I think is happening. I think that both realities are real and he's stuck in between both of them trying to figure out which one makes sense. And that scene where where she's got her break no she's got her neck broken and uh and, and she's still like saying, You'll love me forever. This is so happy. How can I be happy? Absolutely fucking mind breaking shit, dude. He he it's the blending of those two realities. The one where he's just in bed with her and the one where she just got, got done torturing him. Those realities are like doing this right now. They're doing this. And it's all because of his guilt. His guilt is so frustrating that it's splitting his perception, it's splitting his being into two separate realities. It's such a good fucking movie. It's so cool. I'm going to watch Ichi the Killer next. My whole point in watching these movies is to disprove that these things that are happening in the film are logical to occur. Not just that the character shouldn't be doing them, but that the way reality works, the way life would only, the only way life would make sense wouldn't even allow these things to occur. Because the more that I do that, the less these things occur. And I hear Ichi the Killer is more fucked up because at, at the beginning of Ichi the Killer, uh, based on what Watch Mojo is saying, the title rises out of some guy's jizz, right? The title of the film rises out of some guy's spunk, and uh, that that right there, that, that already sets the tone for how crazy this movie is gonna be. So let's get into it, right? I guess I should add the context that he's like he's like a peeping tom. He's like a peeping Tom, and that's why it's messed up. But yeah. Whenever I eat ramen, I like to add Miracle when I have it. It makes the whole experience creamier. That shit creamy in. I mean, oh no, no, I said it wrong. I got that creamy in. Alright, um. Another thing that this movie does, not 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 Ichi, um, the audition, something that that I actually attack the film for, um, it does this thing, and it's very slick, and it's supposed to it's supposed to illustrate the confusion, the disturbance, the how disturbing Asami is, the lady who's torturing uh, our protagonist, right? It's supposed to illustrate how disturbing it is. It does this thing where you're shown a, a scene, you're shown like a, a clip, not a clip, but like it's a whole scene. You're shown, I guess we can separate the scene in the clips, right? You're shown a clip of her as a little girl laying on the floor in like this little ballerina outfit, right? And then you're shown right after that a clip of a camera following up Asami's legs and it gets way too close to her private area. And that fucks with your mind until it goes all the way up to reveal that it's Asami as an adult. But in that moment, that is so fucking disturbing. That is like so fucking like... That shit is so conflicting to the audience. And it's so clever the way he does it. It's so clever because it's like... It's supposed to like represent like how easily... The, how easy it is to be sexually disturbed. That's how it's supposed to... That's what it's supposed to do. Got too close. Got too close, dude. 
Um, I, it's still a brilliant fucking movie. The ending is brilliant. The ending is brilliant. Um, obviously, I had the good ending where it was all just a dream up until I said, hey, I did it. I got the good ending. Hooray. And I think the movie got petty and just fucking went back to him being tortured just to piss me off. I did lick that off. Why is it still there? Yeah, that's a real thing that I accepted that movies, my first time viewing a movie, the movie is in a state of position in which it could be anything. And anyone I talk to about the movie is just gonna have had a similar experience until we're all describing the same film. Uh, so, so what I think is going on now. I think that the first time you watch a movie, the movie is anything. Uh, it's responding to who you are and what you're thinking, your concept. And that the ending you get when you watch a movie is based on who you are. Now, what I also know is because I'm such a smart guy, there's also going to be an asshole who fucking makes a movie in which he puts a bad ending anyway with the with the expectation of everyone seeing the bad ending. And he'll say, that must mean you're all bad people, huh? Based on what y'all are thinking, you fucking retards. And it's like, well, actually, you're the fucking retard because this shit has like real science backing it. And the fact that you're so fucking closed minded that you want to call everyone who's thinking about things that you don't want to accept stupid is why I'm going to fucking show up. So I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna show up when you least expect it. All right, and then you're not gonna fucking be ready, and you're not gonna you're not gonna understand what's happening at that point. You're not gonna be able to comprehend it. Yeah. So. Also, moving on to. Um, the last two, the last two phases of all of this before my birthday, um, <clears throat> there's an argument out there that suggests that life is not happening if there's not an error for us all to face. If there are no problems, we have nothing to do. But here's the thing. We've all played Minecraft creative mode. There are no problems in Minecraft creative mode. You can make whatever you want in Minecraft creative mode. You enjoy what you're doing in Minecraft creative mode. But there are guys that suggest that life isn't interesting unless we're all in survival mode. And I would beg to differ. I would even go on to say that there's a higher state in which you can be in both survival and creative just to explore both concepts at the same time. All right, that's it. That's started. Let's go.